Matrix-free quantification is one of the strengths of low-energy ion scattering. In this video, we will explore why it is matrix-free, how to perform quantification, and show some examples of the quantification compared to other surface science techniques. In lice, noble gas ions are scattered from the surface atoms of the sample. The energy after the collision is given by the formula shown, which is based on classical mechanics. As the mass and energy of the incoming ion and the angle and energy of the scattered ion are known, the mass of the surface atom can be calculated. In this way, the scattering peaks in the light spectrum are used to identify the elements in the surface of the sample. The intensity of the peak in the spectrum is determined by the probability of an ion hitting an atom of the specific element, being scattered into the right scattering angle, keeping its charge, being transmitted in the analyzer, and finally detected. Written in a formula, the signal normalized to the number of primary ions is a product of the atomic surface concentration of the element, the scattering cross-section, which depends on the primary ion mass, primary ion energy, and the element in the surface, the probability that a scattered primary ion remains ionized after the collision. This is significantly less than one, which means a large fraction of the scattered ions are lost to neutralization, and an instrumental factor which includes analyzer transmission and detector efficiency. As all these factors are constant for given experimental conditions, the signal S is directly proportional to the atomic concentration N. Thus, we have a quantitative analytical technique. For quantification, we only need a sensitivity factor to convert signal intensity to surface coverage. The linearity of the signal with surface concentration can also be demonstrated experimentally. The plot shows the intensity of a tungsten peak versus the intensity of a bromine peak. We start in the upper left with a clean tungsten surface, and while absorbing more and more bromine, the intensity of the tungsten drops until almost a complete bromine layer is formed, covering about 90% of the tungsten. Some holes in the film remain, but using other techniques that do not have the extreme surface sensitivity of lice, you will always detect significant amounts of tungsten which is only one monolayer below the surface. As the correlation plot can be fit with a straight line, any part of the surface is either tungsten or bromine, and this is reflected in the lice signals of the two elements which are perfectly anti-correlated. The straight line indicates there is no matrix effect, the sensitivity for one element is not influenced by the presence of the other. This anti-correlation can be shown in many elemental combinations and is universal except for some known elements. Here is an example of zirconium oxide growth on silicon dioxide. The more zirconium is detected, the less silicon signal is there. Besides demonstrating the absence of matrix effects, these plots also have a practical use for quantification. When the straight line can be fit to a few data points, the intersection with the two axes shows the intensity for the pure material. This yields the sensitivity factor for this element. To draw the line, only a few samples with different ratios of the two elements are required. In particular, the pure material is not needed. With sufficient samples, this way of quantification can also be applied to three or more elements in the sample. One example that illustrates a rather classical way for quantification is from noble metal catalysts, where elements like palladium and silver, or platinum and gold, are used in various catalysis applications. A challenge for lice is the fact that these elemental pairs have overlapping isotopes and are therefore difficult to resolve. For quantification, a typical approach, besides the correlation plot method which was just demonstrated, is to measure samples with known surface concentration of their respective elements, for example the pure elements or their oxides. Here, using 8 kV krypton scattering and the so-called time of flight filter, the peaks for pure platinum and gold were measured, the peaks show a significantly different position, although there is, due to the overlapping isotope pattern, also a strong overlap of the peaks. This is only possible using the QTAC analyzer, which allows the operator to use heavy primary ions to improve the mass resolution for the heavy elements. Under the same conditions, the catalyst samples were also measured using the reference spectra as templates for the peak shape, shown as dotted lines, the spectra of the samples are fitted. In other words, we look for the linear combination of the two reference spectra which resembles the spectrum of the sample. The scaling factor for both reference spectra directly gives the coverage of platinum and gold on the sample. Using this procedure, the surface concentration of platinum and gold can be determined for the different samples. 
In this case, the comparison with XPS data shows two significant effects of the much larger information depth of XPS. Firstly, the upper table shows that XPS underestimates the amount of metal. As the metal phase is only a few angstroms thick, and XPS integrates over a few nanometers, the metal-free support contributes to the signal and gives the impression of a lower surface metal content. Secondly, the gold-platinum ratio is much smaller for samples D and H when measured with lice. Again, lice is much more surface sensitive and picks up an enrichment of platinum at the surface. Bulk and surface of the metal phase are not the same, so it is important to specifically measure the outer layer of the atoms. Those are the catalytically active ones. Similar to the platinum gold example, also silver palladium reference peaks of the pure materials can be measured and distinguished despite the overlapping isotopes. These reference peaks are then used to fit the sample spectra and quantify the amounts of silver and palladium. As we have seen, lice is generally a quantitative technique. The signal is directly proportional to the surface concentration. Multiple ways to determine the sensitivity factor for an element are possible and most straightforward is to use the reference materials to determine the sensitivity factor. This was illustrated using noble metal catalysts where the mass resolution of the QTAC is required to resolve the two elements and quantification is performed by using reference spectra. For more information, please visit iontoff.com QTAC.